Although most people have a limit, have you heard of the person who holds the no limits record? Herbert Nitsch made the decision to descend to 801 feet, breaking his previous record of 700 feet. He lost consciousness in the depths because he was unaware that the aquatic world had another purpose. What took place? Would he live to see another day? Free diver Herbert Nitsch was born in Austria on April 20, 1970. In every one of the eight freediving disciplines that AI Day International has recognized, he has set world records. The record for deepest dive on Earth is held by Herbert Nitsch. He has a breath-holding capacity of more than nine minutes. In the No Limits discipline, where he can use a weighted sled to drop as far as possible and then utilize a buoyancy device to return to the surface, he holds one of the important records. By diving to a depth of 702 feet in Spetses, Greece, in June 2007, Herbert broke the world record. His previous record stood at 600 feet, set the year before. The world record in the constant weight event, which is regarded as the classic form of freediving, was also held by Herbert Nitsch. The diver descends next to a line in this discipline without using it or getting any help from a sled. They cannot drop any weights to assist them in rising to the surface since they must maintain a constant weight. In 2006, Herbert dived to a depth of 361 feet, breaking the previous world record. However, the dive was invalidated because he failed to follow the exact surfacing procedures in the allotted time. Herbert Nitsch set a world record dive in the constant weight category in Herkata, Egypt in December 2006. Willem Neri's previous record was surpassed by 6.5 feet as he dove to a depth of 364 feet. He also established a record in the constant weight, no fins category later that year at the triple depth competition in Dahab, Egypt. He increased the constant weight record at the World Championships in Sharm to 367 feet. Additionally, Herbert won the I-Day Individual World Championships. In total, he has set 33 official world records in a variety of freediving competitions. He also set a record in the traditional Greek Scandalopatra competition by diving to a depth of 351 feet. One of the biggest volcanic explosions ever documented in human history gave rise to Santorini. The land was formerly one large island, but the force of the explosion caused it to split into two, creating a caldera that is 1181 feet deep. The islands of Santorini, Thuresia, and the tiny Aspernisi partially round this crater. Greece's Santorini is well known for its gorgeous splendor on land, but because of its volcanic topography, it also has stunning underwater landscapes. When you dive in Santorini, you may explore the well-known caldera, historic shipwrecks, and magnificent caverns, providing divers of all experience levels with a distinctive and thrilling experience. Since recreational scuba diving has just been permitted throughout the Cyclades Archipelago for the past 10 years, the dive sites in Santorini are in excellent condition. Because of its gorgeous underwater scenery and year-round crystal clear waters, Santorini is home to some of the best diving in the Mediterranean. Popular dive locations in Santorini exhibit underwater characteristics that highlight the region's volcanic past while diving in the central caldera offers exhilarating opportunity to investigate wrecks and dive along intriguing underwater walls. Exploring the south shore gives divers the chance to see beautiful caves. Due to its moderate temperatures and plenty of sunshine, Santorini is a popular vacation spot all year round. Santorini has year-round scuba diving opportunities because to the Aegean Sea's pristine waters. To stay warm while diving, it is suggested that you wear a heavier wetsuit throughout the winter. Herbert Nitsch started his Extreme 800 quest on June 6, 2012, with the goal of breaking his own world record in the No Limits Sled category. His objective was to break the previous record of 700 feet and dive to a depth of 801 feet. Herbert had spent a lot of time and energy carefully preparing for this difficult task. 
But little did Herbert realize that fateful summer afternoon as he approached the Greek island of Santorini that he was going to experience a circumstance that would turn into a nightmarish scenario. Greece's Santorini was experiencing strong winds on that particular Wednesday, but Herbert was ready for the momentous occasion. Numerous years were devoted to preparation, including planning, creating the sled, putting safety measures in place, and going through extensive training. Everything in place, he started his dive with confidence and resolve. Herbert broke the previous world record by successfully reaching a stunning depth of 818.6 feet. However, an unexpected thing occurred as he rose back to the surface. He unexpectedly passed out due to narcosis, a condition that is extremely uncommon in the world of freediving. Initially, the plan included a certain approach for Herbert's climb upon his return. When he got to a depth of between 170 meters, as per the original plan, he was going to progressively slow down the sled. A major component of the strategy also included a one-minute decompression stop at about 32.8 feet, 10 meters, of depth. However, Herbert was unable to carry out the sled's intended deceleration because to the narcosis-induced unconsciousness, which took place about 328 feet below the surface. As a result, the sled kept going until it came to a rest at the target depth of 32.8 feet. The outcome was greatly influenced by the sled's design and safety features. They were specifically built to guarantee that the sled will stop at a depth of 32.8 feet. Fortunately, the sled performed as designed and stopped just in front of the safety divers. Luckily, the watchful safety divers noticed something was wrong right away, which prompted them to act immediately and bring Herbert back to the surface. Due to the rigorous design of an emergency rescue plan, which was a crucial component of Herbert's thorough safety preparations before the dive, this incredible response was made possible. Fortunately, Herbert miraculously regained consciousness before reaching the surface, showing improvement in his health. When he reached the surface, he showed attentiveness and made a significant choice. He asked for a mask to go back underwater to a depth of about 32.8 feet because he was aware of the risks related to decompression sickness. This is a typical post-dive safety procedure that aids in the body's release of extra gases, reduces the risk of getting decompression sickness, and enables the appropriate amount of time for recompression while breathing only pure oxygen. Herbert started to feel the effects of decompression sickness as he was decompressing underwater. He became aware that both his body and mind were acting strangely. Unfortunately, he didn't make the anticipated one-minute decompression pause, and as a result, he began to suffer serious effects. Decompression sickness type 2 in its most severe form, which Herbert experienced, is comparable to having numerous brain strokes with severe first symptoms. His well-being was significantly affected by the terrible ramifications of this disease. Herbert's situation required rapid attention when it resurfaced. He was quickly taken to the port of Fira by a speedboat, where the emergency called for more medical care. He was to be flown in an ambulance plane to an Athens hospital and a decompression chamber. Herbert was treated in Athens for nearly a week while his condition was attentively watched by medical professionals. After spending time in Athens, Herbert continued his journey by being transported by ambulance aircraft to Myrna, a town in southern Germany. He would receive recompression therapy for roughly one month in Myrna. With this specialist care, the pressure on his body was adjusted gradually to aid in his recuperation. After receiving extensive recompression therapy in Myrna, Herbert's recovery process went on for a few more months in Vienna, Austria. The goal of this rehabilitation program was to aid him in regaining his capacity to walk, speak, and move independently, as well as his fundamental motor abilities. For Herbert, the road to rehabilitation was paved with formidable obstacles. He struggled greatly with grief and pessimism during the rehabilitation process, wondering if he would ever feel normal again. He considered taking severe action to escape the emotional and physical pain he was experiencing, even thinking about jumping out the window, but he quickly abandoned the notion. 
These feelings had grown so intense. Herbert maintained his inner drive and persistence despite his slow growth and the early depressive phase. He resolved to do whatever it would take to get his life back to how it had been. This robust outlook paralleled the strategy he had always adopted in his freediving endeavors, pushing boundaries, exploring the full extent of human potential, and consistently establishing new limits. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you saw, click the bell icon, like, and subscribe buttons to be notified when we post another thrilling diving story.